Hi everyone, this video is going to be about mean and standard de deviation, which is related to our third course goal, which is all about statisting it. Using statistics to determine if there is a significant difference between a measured quantity and a known, or if a, if a suspicious point can be rejected from a data set. So we're going to start off very generally, and I want you to think about what is the average score on an exam in general chemistry? And you might be thinking, well, that's probably a 70 or a 75. So the reason that the average score is a 70 or a 75 is because of the following. If we were to plot test score on an x-axis and population on the y-axis, or in other words, the number of students who got each score, let's say we say the average was a 70, that average is a 70 because not too many people failed the exam, most people got a 70, and yet not too many people got 100 on the exam. So you may be familiar with this. This is the so-called bell-shaped curve, but I like to call it also a normal distribution. A normal distribution. So one way to define the mean of a data set, which is abbreviated as X bar, I know you know how to calculate a mean, so I'm not going to give you the formula, but you can think of the mean as the middle of a so-called distribution of scores. You might also ha have heard of this plot being called uh, a histogram. Histogram or distribution. But you can think of the mean as the middle of the distribution. Now, let's say that this data set, this distribution is from, I don't know, spring of 2018. And let's imagine that we have a new population, maybe fall of 2019, take the same test, and their distribution looks something like this. Not too many people failed, not too many people got C's, a lot of people got A's and B's and nobody got 100. That's still sort of a bell-shaped curve, and we can still maybe think of the mean as the middle of the distribution. Here, I guess the mean would be much higher, maybe a 90, maybe that was the average score. But notice that the width of this distribution is much more narrow than our other distribution. So that takes us to the standard deviation, and we can define the standard deviation or abbreviate it with the symbol S, and you can think of it as the width of a distribution. Again, you can see that in this population or in this semester, all of those students scored so much closer to the mean, but in this semester, there was quite more, a bit more of a spread, wasn't there? Here's your mean, and you can see that the scores ranged much more wider compared to this data set here. So we do have a formula for standard deviation. It's equal to the square root, and it's the sum and you'll take an individual data point, x sub i, subtract the mean, square that difference. You'll do that for every single data point. You'll add it up, and then you'll divide by n minus 1. So another way to think of the standard deviation, or let me ask you, which of these data sets, this one shown in black, or this one shown in red is more reproducible? Obviously, it's the one shown in red. 
And when we talk about reproducibility, aren't we talking about precision? So standard deviation is the way that we can evaluate the precision of a data set, whether that data set is scores on a test or water hardness in Duck Pond and Boone Creek. One final note about standard deviation, this quantity n minus one is called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom. So I don't have, I'm not gonna do any examples on how to use this formula. When we're in class, I'll show you how to use your calculator to calculate the standard deviation. So that was just a very brief overview of mean and standard deviation. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for listening.